the apostles of old who fought and suffered for the gospel of Christ. The right Reverend Dr. Peter Awelewa Adebi fought a good fight of faith. He came, he saw, and he conquered to the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The late Bishop Adebiyi was a patriarch of inestimable value, a devout Christian and an Anglican by faith. He was an icon, a visionary leader, a great church historian, an organist, a great administrator, a lover of youth and children, a generous giver, home builder and binder, church planter, human developer, a teacher, and to mention but a few, a man whose footprint will ever remain indelible on every path he passed throughout his lifetime. The Right Reverend Adebiyi was born on the 27th of April 1943 at Osiekiti in the old Undo state, now Ekiti state, to a fairly educated father, Chief Samuel Okumola, and mother, Madam Alice Fatinue Adebiyi, both of blessed memory. So passing the various challenges from his birth to infanthood, he struggled to become great in life. At age 6, he got admitted into St. Paul's Nazarian Primary School, Shiekiti, precisely in 1949. While he was there, he earned himself a double promotion twice because of his academic brilliance and hard work. Between 1958 and 1960, he was at the community secondary modern school, Ushiekite, a school not regarded as a standard secondary school, but taken as an alternative because of his parents' financial constraint. With his determination to pursue his education to the zenith, he later attended the All Saints Teachers College, Ushiekite, between 1963 and 1964, where he backed a grade 3 teacher's certificate. This certificate was what he used to teach as a trained teacher at St. Philip's Anglican Church at Ramo In 1967, he sat for the General Certificate of Examination GCE and had five credits at a sitting, a very rare feat in the town during that period. Interestingly, he was the only candidate who got such results in his town at that time. While waiting for admission into a university, his church vicar then in Aramokoikiti, the late Venerable Joshua Oloniyo of Ilaramoki, persuaded him to seek admission into Emmanuel College of Theology, Ibadan. To God be the glory, from that time, he spent his entire life serving in the Lord's vineyard. While in Aramokoikiti, he learned how to play the organ and later became the church organist, a super organist at that time. He later met his wife, the young Caroline Adepiyi, now of blessed memory, who was then a member of his church choir. They got married in the year 1970. In 1970, he obtained a University of London diploma in theology and was ordained a deacon and then a priest in 1971. He started his priesthood at the Holy Trinity Church of the Anglican Communion in Lawekiti. While at the Emmanuel College, he ran his academic and priesthood programs concurrently. From that humble beginning, he served at several other parishes of the Anglican Communion in and around Ekiti. At a time, he was a chaplain to his mentor and role model, the Most Reverend Abiodun Adetiloye, of blessed memory, the late Adetiloye had encouraged him to further his education to the zenith. He obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree in Religious Studies in 1975, a Master's degree in 1981, and a Doctorate degree also in Religious Studies specializing in Church History in 1987 from the University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University, Ife, Oshun State. First, satisfying his unending desire for qualitative education. In 1983, he was preferred a canon. In 1987, he was transferred to the Archbishop Vinin Memorial Church, Ikeja, Lagos, as the vicar. In the year 1990, he was collated as an Arcticine, and on the 26th of May 1993, he was consecrated 
as Bishop of Owo Diocese of the Anglican Communion, on the 20th of November 1999, he was translated to the Diocese of Lagos West as the pioneer bishop of the diocese, a position he held to God's glory until he retired in 2013, having reached the mandatory age of retirement. Baba Peter Awelewa Adebi was not only a predecessor in office, but a father and hero, a benefactor, I can say categorically without missing word that I happen to be one of those that benefited immensely from his ministry and his episcopacy. As bishop of a diocese, he made great impacts in building a solid foundation and structure for the new diocese of Lagos West. He judiciously worked on the vision and mission already drawn by the diocesan dignitaries to make it one of the leading dioceses in the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. These dignitaries supported his ministry without bias. Honorable Justice Babashola Gwadi, the Chancellor, Chief Olushe Gwoshukeye, then Bishop's appointee and plenipotentiary, and now father of a diocese. Honorable Justice Ayo Phillips, the Deputy Chancellor, Mr. Bambo Adesoya, Registrar, Dr. Olutuyi Okewo, Treasurer, Mrs. Shola Ibida Bobi, Legal Secretary, and later Mrs. Fiola Kalkrick, Venerable George Adeyeye, Admin Assistant to the Bishop, and later Venerable Oluwole Omotui. Others were Mrs. Teju Akindolire, the Lay Synod Secretary, Mr. Tunji Ogmutuashi, Diocesan communicator and a host of others. When we started the diocese, we started on what you can call zero level. We had no money. Little money that we had, we accepted it and he made the most out of it. We had no house to give him. We hired a house and when the bomb blast occurred, it affected him badly. Both himself and his wife tolerated us and he was eventually able to have a house which he hired at um, Gunaiki, which was far, a far cry from being a bishop's court. There he accepted and he lived in it until his retirement. Bishop Adebiyi summarized this vision and mission into three points agenda which he had previously used when he was in the Owo Diocese. These were aggressive evangelism which led to church planting and because of the church's future, youth development, his aggressive evangelical drive cuts across all departments in the diocese through the Directorate of Evangelism. Several revivals and crusades were organized. He walked tirelessly, almost to a breaking point. In the 10 years, first 10 years of the diocese, he planted over 120 churches. So that by the time of a decade of the diocese, we had over 250 churches, over 240 churches with over 250 priests. So he was very dynamic. He was uh, uh, going everywhere, evangelizing in the Diocese of Lagos West. Papa Devi was not just my priest, but he was my father, my uncle, my friend, my confidant. It has been a pleasure working with him because he's a very, very compassionate father. He's very loving, he's very giving, Anything that is in his power to give, he did. Mm. Anytime he mounts the pulpit, it was always um, it was always good. One went with a lot of expectation because you know that um, either by joke or by examples, Baba would drive his um, message home. And um, till the very end, pleasant, easy going, lovely man. I thank God for his life. Right from our war, I've been in Chaplin and I follow him to Lagos and I'll be a father. And uh, Baba 
is somebody that accommodates everybody that comes to him. He was a man that lived by faith. I can say boldly say with the level of closeness to him that is not there is no iota of secretism in him. He's a man that lived by the gospel and for the gospel alone. The women organizations, the prison's ministry, youth ministry, and lots more all witness explosive spiritual growth in the diocese. He built the diocesan women's center named the Caroline Adefiola Women's Center, also known as the City of God, Ipaja, which comprises of hostel accommodation, large auditorium, and lots more to the glory of God. This development has continued with the present bishop, Ulushola Odediji, who has added other notable structures to the center. All the women in the diocese were constantly fed with the word of God through Bishop Adebiyi's energetic late wife, Mama Caroline Adefiola Adebiyi. He made several Episcopal visits to different Arcticaries within the diocese where new churches were planted. Some of these churches have today grown to be big and viable. Yes, I had the privilege of working with Baba for six years when he was in our diocese. And here in the diocese of Lagos West, we were together for almost 10 years. I remember one day, Baba was being asked what he would like people to say about him when he might have finished his assignment. He said he would like to be called Peter the church planter. In other words, Peter the church builder. But I want to add that it wasn't just building the church. Baba was a builder of people, and I happened to be one. God gave him the grace to recognize the gift of God in us, and he was able to develop it to the utmost. Um, Baba Adebi, I am related to him first as his priest. I was his priest for years before I became bishop. And um, apart from the ministry, I think our relationship uh, is like a father to a son in, in Christ. He was uh, my role model uh, bishop, my role model priest, and uh, a figure father for me and my wife. I want to appreciate late Papa Debi for the strength and for the grace that the Lord bestowed upon him. He was a determined person. By the time we visit, sometimes he will go on visitation for two days. And Papa is there. Anytime we get to any church, he will take his time to put up the recordings of whatever transpired during his visit to the church. Uh, Papa was moving from one place to another and he was identifying new places for church planting. I worked with uh, Papa DB in various forms and categories, uh, right from when he was vicar all the way through as bishop. Um, a, an absolute passionate man of God. Um, when he got the title Peter the Planter, it really was uh, a testimonial for his love for God's work that he signed up for and the impact that he had. We thank God for his life, you know, a life of achievement, you know, and uh, as he was usually called then, uh, he was Peter the church planter. We planted so many churches in, in this diocese and they worked very hard you know, to put the diocese on a very sound footing. On youth development, he showed more love to the young ones and encouraged them to be actively involved in programs that will help propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ. He encouraged churches in the diocese to have youth church and chapels to do a series of programs which included seminars, retreats and conferences. It was in the time of our DBE, we were inaugurated. He was one that established youth forum in the church when it was mass exodus. He called us together, my children, why are you run away? We and the children, we, come, we came together and we asked to go and form our youth forum, youth society, and youth church. And we asked us to go and do election. We did election, we become the first president of the youth. He was a father, a father to us. In fact, the house is our meeting, our meeting, our meeting home. The wife, our bishop, 
always there for us. Whenever I have an issue, we'll go to him. And he will always give a counsel. He always talk to us as his own children. He doesn't segregate anybody, no. He took all of us as members of his fam family. I met Baba, late Pa Adebi, through his daughter, Tosi Adebi, now Mrs. Ayeleye. I grew up in this chapel, basically in the choir, and I served under the leadership of Tosin. Serving under her made me realize that Papa was someone who had a lot of love for young people, and that was seen in the establishment of the youth chapel. Papa loved me so much. I remember a time that there's no job in my hand. Papa gave me 25,000 to establish my job, but today I'm enjoying Papa. On education, late Bishop Adebiyi played significant roles in the building and development of the diocese's educational structures. He was instrumental to the creation and funding of the Bishop Ajayi Crowder University, or Yo. The Diocese of Lagos West, through Bishop Adebiyi, played important roles in the takeoff, ranging from funding to administration and lots more. He also established an Anglican girls' school at Otoy Janiki for the diocese. At the time when the Lagos State Government returned some seized Anglican missionary schools back to the communion, they were returned back in decayed and dilapidated state. Bishop Adebiyi, in conjunction with other owner bishops, ensured that those schools received facelift from the decayed state into befitting schools conducive for learning. The late Bishop Awelewa Debi also built a well-equipped hospital for the diocese at Chiaba Street, Agege, Lagos. He created good welfare programs for the clerics in the diocese. He properly implemented the idea of covenant seed scheme. The scheme helped to finance several evangelical outreaches in the diocese. He was a very kind man, large-hearted, and he did so well for the Diocese of Lagos West in church planting. Diocese of Lagos West is, a is the diocese to beat, the diocese to catch up with, all to the glory of God and the hard work of my Lord Bishop Baba Adebi. I have been an ardent watcher of Bishop Awelewa Adebi, a great individual who God had endowed with so much in church planting, in church ministration, in mentorship, in everything that is good in the church ministry. During his tenure, the diocese co-hosted all bishops in Africa at an event known as African Anglican Bishops Conference in November 2004. His pioneering efforts were indeed legendary. He wrote several papers and was a regular face in the media calling the government to order. He was greatly burdened by the retrogression in the country and was actively involved with progressive forces to enthrone good governance. He joined the League of Those Who Battled the Military in the post-June 12 annulment years. This earned him the tag, Nadeko Bishop. He's a kind-hearted man, a man who wished other people were, and uh, a very frank man who will say things the way it is. He's a typical and equity man who will not uh, keep grudges. When he's not happy, you see it in him. When he's happy with you, you see it in him. And um, he has a way of uh, uh, making himself acceptable to people around him. He also carried out many strategic projects and reforms in the Diocese of Lagos West and everywhere he served. I came across Lord Bishop Adubi in my church as St. Andrew's Anglican Church, Adwekiti, when he was transferred there. I came from Port Harcourt, and with, from that time, we became friends. We were to roof the church of our home. I met him on Saturday. He said he would give us two bundles of iron sheet. You, a clergy? I said, he will give me two, I will give five. And by the day we are launching on Sunday, we got more than what we needed for the church. He never neglected his role at his homestead and town. He contributed his quota to the growth and development of his hometown, Osiekiti. 
he was indeed a legend and loved by all. One thing I learned from him that I can that you can't take away from me is to appreciate people's efforts. Papa did that to the to the last to the last. The last time I took him to Lassoot for medical checkup, he didn't know when he got there, but suddenly he saw me and uh, he said, Bishop, ah, you are here. And he was praying for me, he was still shedding tears. And uh, what else do you want from somebody who, who appreciates efforts? He appreciated every effort done for him. He served as a member of the Board of Governors at the Gongo Modu Grammar School, Idu Ikiti. He was the examining chaplain, Ikiti Anglican Diocese, between 1980 and 1987, and a university lecturer at the University of Idu Ikiti and the Lagos State University of Jaw between 1984 and 1990. He was once the Episcopal Secretary to the bishops in the Church of Nigeria for 13 years until his retirement in 2013. He handed over the leadership of the diocese to a new bishop elect, the Right Reverend Dr. James Olusho Odedeji, who, with the support of his amiable wife, Dr. Mrs. Lydia Odedeji, have brought in various programs and developments in all areas to the Diocese of Lagos West. He has built on the foundation to make the Diocese of Lagos West achieve its vision and mission as one of the leading dioceses in the Church of Nigeria in preparing this nation for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He lost his wife, Mama Caroline Adifiola Adebiyi, on the 31st of December 2015. He has trained his children to where there will be no fear anymore. And God has handled the children and what he has left behind because none of them is suffering and none of them will ever suffer in Jesus' name, including the children, children. I'm thanking God for his life because I believe and I know he's resting with the Lord. We will continue to remember him for the good work, the good work of the foundation of a great diocese like this. And we pray that God will be with his family left behind and the church of God in Jesus' name. He commiserates with the children and the entire Adebi family and our father in, the, in God, the Daosishan, the Right Reverend Dr. James Olushola Odedeji. We pray that Papa's death will not be in quick succession in our midst and we pray that the Christian fortitude to bear the irreparable loss God will grant all of us in Jesus' name. He has lived his own life. We are left behind. And I pray that God will grant him eternal rest and support the family that he has left behind and the Church of God. Uh, Badebi, rest in peace. We love you. Badebi, good night. May the soul of the faithful departed, by the mercy of God, rest in perfect peace. Amen. We are sure we will miss Papa Adebi. It is our prayer that uh, his soul will rest in peace and the family left behind and the Church of God will continue to enjoy God's grace and mercy. I will meet you on Resurrection Day. Good night, Papa. We pray that uh, his soul rest in perfect peace. We pray that God will accept his soul in perfect peace in the mighty name of Jesus. A humble man and we are missing him. He walked historically. To God be the glory for the service he gave. We have missed a cherished priest, child, and work out of God. We missed him and we pray that God continues to grant him eternal rest in Jesus' name. We take solace in the fact that he left a very good legacy in the diocese. May he so rest in peace. I pray that God will uphold the family and be with them in the mighty name of Jesus. The late right Reverend Dr. Peter Welewa Depi was survived by brothers, sisters, children and grandchildren. He was a very generous man. Right from the word go, right from the beginning of his life, he was very generous. I mean, throughout his life, even as a bishop, he touched so many lives. Not only within our family, but within other, you know, other families, other, you know, people, so many people actually benefited uh, from his generosity. My father was an incredible man. He was a family man and he was able to 
uh, go along with every member of his family when he was alive. Even both the immediate and extended families. I am Femi Fatile and my wife Femi Fatile and our baby, Adife Fatile. I consider it a big privilege to be part of Baba DBE while he was here with us through marriage and ordination. Baba DBE was a big gift and a greater blessing to the church, to the entire world. And I want to say that, the, that what he is to the people outside there, the same he is to the people uh, at home, his family. And the training he has given his children uh, has helped to form my wife. And I can also say that today, my home is a beautiful reference through the training that my wife received from her parents, especially Baba Debi. Daddy, it is hard to say goodnight. I will always cherish you being your first daughter. The legacy you left behind lives on. Thank you for this sound training that you give unto us. Your great faith we will always remember you. Good night, Daddy. Your legacy shall continue. You might be dead in the physical realm, but you will always be in our hearts. The resurrection money, good night, Grandpa. It's been a great honor being your son, Dad. Thank you for the legacy you've left behind and the exemplary life of faith that you have left for us to follow. It's very sad to say good night, but we know we will see you again. Grandpa, you have a wonderful sense of humor. You had a nickname for all of us. Mine was a funky baby, which I liked. The last time I saw you was in January. Even though you were on your hospital bed with oxygen mask, you still asked, Funke Shotilui, I laughed and you tried to smile. We can never forget the memories we share with you. I remember Grandpa visiting us every once in a while. I always thought of my sister to see who would sit next to him. Although I'm now older, I would like to sit with him once more and embrace his deep voice and kind hands. Rest in peace, Grandpa, for we'll see you again on the day of resurrection. Good, Good night. night. I thank God for your life, Dad. I thank God for a well-lived life. You lived your life for others, not just for yourself. And you left uh, an indelible set of footprints for others. Thank you, Dad. It's been a real privilege to have shared your life with you, Daddy. Thank you for your selflessness, for the love and for the care for us all. I will always remember my grandpa as someone who always tries to affect others positively and impact their lives in a positive way. I promise to carry on your legacy. Thank you, Grandpa, for being a strong person, for helping others, for being a great man, and for living an exemplary life. We love you, Grandpa. We miss you, Grandpa. We will see you again on the resurrection morning. This is for you, Grandpa. Thank you for being a friend, mentor, and an encourager to all of us. Thank you, Grandpa, for being a dad. We will definitely miss you. Thank you for always thinking about us and checking on us. Thank you, Grandpa, for being a role model and for being an example to us. Thank you, Grandpa, for being a kind man. Thank you, Grandpa, for being a man of faith. Thank you, Grandpa, for being godly. Thank you, God for, thank you Grandpa, for taking care of us and your children. Good night, Grandpa. Enjoy your rest while we wait to meet you in heaven. We look forward to that day of rejoicing. Good night for now. Dear Daddy, how wonderful it must be to be on your feet again, walking, to be raising your hands and your voice in the presence of your Maker. Thank you for your wonderful example of faith, which has shaped who I am today, for your endless love and for the countless sacrifices you made for us. Daddy, we saw you work tirelessly, we saw Daddy, you laugh endlessly, and we saw you remain faithful to the very end. Now we hope you will look down and always see us following your example. Grandpa, you are so special to me because you always made me feel safe and even though I can't see you anymore, I know you are still close to me. I love you very much, Grandpa, and we all want you to know that we will keep the faith, we will tell the story, 
and we will make you proud. This is the Reverend and Mrs. Bodeda Amola's family. It was such a great privilege to be Baba Debi's son-in-law. I call him my father-in-law because he doesn't see me as an in-law. He treats me more like his own son. And I'm very grateful for what he has done. Knowing him changed the course of my ministry. I'll forever be grateful. Daddy served God and he served humanity. So I can boldly say that our loss is heaven's gain. Good night, Daddy. My dear father, you were such a great family man. You were so loving, caring, and ever ready to provide for your family and everyone around you. I will greatly miss you. I know you're resting in the bosom of our Lord. Good night, my dear father. I will miss you, Grandpa. Your food, your kindness, your concern, and your love that you show upon me. Grandpa was a, was a rare vessel, a rare gem to the world. It changed the lives of many people. It touched their lives to make them better. He was caring, loving, and passionate for others. I will miss you, Grandpa. I was so shocked to hear that you died. But your love and your kindness was so good. You were not only doing anything for yourself, you were doing it for others. Good night, Grandpa. Sunreo. I can only say that his uh, industrious soul will continue to rest in perfect peace. Bishop Adebihi Sunreo.